Muy buenos días. Soy Dra. Sochil Chavez, and you're watching the Smithsonian Latino Center Live Mobile Broadcast. We are in downtown Denver, here in the home with Denise Solar Cox, Lupe, What's and up? Vanessa. We are <laughs> highlighting here Puerto Riqueño Pasteles. So, Denise, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what has been your experience here in Denver? And then also we can get a little bit about everyone to tell us a little bit of their trajectory coming here to Denver and making pasteles. Sure. Well, I'm originally from New York. I'm a Boricua from New York. And I grew up there eating a lot of our cultural foods and really never making pasteles. And so, um, fast forward, I moved to Colorado and I made a movie about Latino identity. And I really felt more and more connected with my Latino roots and made a decision to make pasteles. And so, this is really my first time. And, and to me, this symbolizes a kind of a reconnection with my culture in a whole new way and being able to be able to pass this down to my family hopefully my girls will like this when they get home from school <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just delighted to share this with my fellow Latina friends here in Denver to share in the experience because it's definitely something that you don't make alone it's something that you make in community oh, that's a beautiful way of introducing it yes this is definitely a food that is made in community And we'll get into also a little bit of the historical context about this culinary art. But I definitely want to hear with, um, from your friends because you also told me um, a little bit about yourself. So we're hearing a bit about this different Puerto Rican diaspora throughout the U.S. Yeah, so I actually was born in Texas from a military family, um, which is common with a lot of um, colonized um, territories. And um, my parents are from Puerto Rico, también, and we lived in South Florida for a <laughs> while, but same thing, my mom never made no, um, I see. She never made them. She said, oh, I'll just go. If somebody makes them, I'll go and, you know. <laughs> so I, you know, grew up with, like, opening the freezer and seeing frozen pasteles, but mm -hmm. never um, ended up making them. And one time I told my mom that I was going to make them, and she goes, that takes you all day. All day it's going to take you. But she had never made them, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm really honored that today I will also be making them for the first time. But same type of story. Um, connecting with food and making food, um, it really matters. And so I started um, making tembleque, which is a Puerto Rican coconut custard. I shared it with yeah, Denise last year. Yeah, she brought some over for Christmas for oh, me yeah, last and year. So that and is my husband ended up eating most of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll make you another bites. one. <laughs> Please do. It was yeah. delicious. So it's definitely um, connecting with uh, our roots and, and being able to see, oh, this is how our family used to do it. And um, it makes me feel more grounded. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And my name is Guadalupe Hurt. Um, I am from California. My parents are from Mexico. And uh, I make a rendition of this. This will be new for me because I usually make the, the traditional Mexican tamales. So these ingredients are definitely different, but similar concepts. So I love to see kind of how it's still, you know, um, the tradition is somehow different from place to place, but there's still some uh, common themes between it, so which is amazing. And I'm excited to be here with my girls doing it too. So it should be awesome. And perfect way to transition. Estamos aquí para todos los que están sintonizando con nosotros ahorita. Estamos haciendo pasteles desde de Puerto Rico aquí con la señora Denise y sus amigas Vanessa y Lupe. Lo que estamos viendo es una arte culinaria desde Mesoamérica, que es un tipo de comida portátil. Entonces se podían ver desde con varias comunidades indígenas cómo se podían llevar este tipo de comida que vemos que tiene maíz y otros ingredientes. Y vamos a hablar un poquito sobre estos ingredientes. So can we get into talking a little bit about the various ingredients that we see and then also the process of how you made that? So spare no details. Let me know how much you labored on this. Okay. How, what <laughs> First what, struggles, so what struggles did you, did you have? <laughs> In order to find these ingredients, because we were talking about this, we're not in Puerto Rico. We are in the Rocky Mountain state, mm -hmm. so we don't always readily see green banana leaves or particular other ingredients. So please let me know what was your process in trying to assemble all of this for us today. Yeah, so um, you know, so the base ingredient of all Puerto Rican food is called something called sofrito, and the base ingredient of sofrito is really something called culantro, and so it's like a cousin of cilantro, something that you can buy very easily in New York uh, and, and, and in Puerto Rico, uh, but really not here unless you go to an Asian market. And so that's where I had to go to buy the culantro that's in the sofrito that is the base of this food. Uh, the other ingredients, yeah, the palm, like the banana leaves also, uh, thank goodness there's a market just four blocks away. I had to call them in advance. And I will say uh, another ingredient to these pasteles, there's, there's two types of pasteles. One, uh, the yuca which is a tuber, otherwise known as cassava. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one that's made with 
platanos, like the like the big green bananas. Mm -hmm. And so my preference is the yuca. Now, uh, part of the whole thing that Vanessa's mother said was that it's a lot of work, especially if you do the yuca ones, because you have to peel them, oh, yeah. and people complain about getting cuts on their hands and whatever. So yesterday when I was at the market, I was or two days ago I was at the market, and I was just looking at the Asian market. Just I'm just curious, culturally curious, mm -hmm. right? Looking at all the things, and lo and behold, I see already shredded, frozen yuca. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy this stuff. So uh, I knew I needed eight pounds of that stuff, and so I was gonna do it in a food processor and peel it, whatever. Uh, and you know what? My husband said oh, I was cheating, and I said I'm an Anya. I can cheat, and so and that means so that so that's what I decided to do. And so that's how we made this. Now there's uh, other ingredients that are in here are pretty much um, available in stores, um, except for the culantro, the banana leaves, and then the, the pre-shredded um, and frozen yuca. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So what do we have in this bowl, this first bowl? Is that the um, banana that you were talking about so, first? Uh, right, oh no, so right here, this is what the equivalent of like the masa is mm -hmm. for the pastere, and so that is the yuca. Um, it also has the oil that I made, and um, so this oil is oil that um, achiote, and achiote oil, and basically I had to buy the seeds, and since I've never made them before, basically I had to combine uh, vegetable oil with the seeds, and. Um, and I didn't know like at what temperature that it needed to be. And so that was my first boo-boo uh, was I had the temperature too high. So I burned all of the, all of the uh, red um, seeds and everything needed to be orange just like that. So I sent my husband out again to the Asian market to get more achote seeds for me. And then I did it properly. And so there is achote oil, which makes this the orangey color. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, oregano. Um, there's also beef bouillon. There's... Um, garlic, onion, and I believe that's it, sauteed, oh, and sofrito, of course, sauteed very slowly on the stove and then combined, and then I like, just stirred everything all together last night to make that. And then what we have here is uh, the pork, and so it's pork and garbanzos. I also made another mistake and added too many garbanzos, but you know what? I love garbanzos, and so I, in my opinion, you can never have too many garbanzos. Mm -hmm. So I'm a garbanzo lover. So it also has raisins, so it has sweet and salty, mm -hmm. and the pork was seasoned in sofrito, lots and lots of sofrito. Okay. Yeah. Well, so for our viewers, because we tend to have quite a few people who like to take down the recipe, would you mind just telling us a little bit about the proportions of how you made um, the, we could call it our, the, our base, our dough, the masa, just mm -hmm. to make sure that we respect those who are also watching to take down the recipe. So you said eight pounds? Eight pounds of yuca. Eight pounds of yuca, so yes. ocho libras de yuca. Sí. And, um, and then, uh, let's see, about... And that was about, already pre-ground, so it was ya molida. Yes, <laughs> I, I did that, guilty. Um, <laughs> and then also, I think it was about uh, four to four tablespoons of sofrito. Okay. And then, uh, and then that was sauteed. Do you happen to have sofrito? I do, yeah, I do, it's right here. So, um, and this is my uh, aunt's recipe, my father's oldest sister. She definitely makes it the best of the family. And, um, and so what you will find in any Puerto Rican's home uh -huh. is in some kind of container, something green like this that smells super fresh. Do you want to smell? Oh, that is beautiful. Does, so that the sofrito so is then, it is you know blended yes, sure culantro. Yeah. With? Uh, with onions. So one red, one, one red, one white, one yellow onion. Is it fresh or a fried? Uh, it's totally fresh and it's actually made in my Vitamix, oh, which I usually have over here. And so, but and, you know, you can make it in a food processor or anything like that, like a really high speed blender. Tons of garlic, tons of garlic, and something called aji dulce, which uh, I cannot find that here. It's impossible. If anybody knows where I can find that, please <laughs> let me know because I can't find it. So it's very, like these sweet, they look like habanero peppers, but they're sweet. Oh, yes. So can't yeah. find those. And so the, then it has also one yellow pepper, one red pepper, and one green pepper. Okay. Great. And then that's what we have here. And then lot, like maybe 12 to 15 cloves of garlic. And so what people... Very like, liberal on the, the cloves. Very <laughs> liberal. We can never have enough yes, garlic. That's what keeps the immune system strong. You know what? I agree with you. I never get sick. So I, yeah, so that's, and this, a lot of times what people do is they take this and then they pour it into ice cube trays. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times every recipe is like one or two tablespoons. And so they'll, and this is something also you can never put too much of mm -hmm. ever. So um, yeah, so that's, this isn't everything here. This is the base um, uh, uh, smell and kind of flavor of all Puerto Rican food. Great, great. Okay, so lo que tenemos aquí para el base es de la masa, es de yuca, que son ocho libras, que 
comentó señora Denise. Tenemos sofrito también, um, lo que dijiste, record, uh, recuérdame. Yeah. Onion, onion powder. Onion powder. Onion powder uh, orégano. Orégano. Garlic powder. Garlic uh, powder. Salt and pepper. Ok, there we go. Solamente. Y, y una de las cosas que nos está compartiendo con nosotros son recetas de su familia, de sus tías. En particular lo que tenemos el chayote. Esa es algo muy indígena que podemos saber de las Américas. Una referencia, so a very good source happened to um, clue me in a little earlier ago, uh, dear friend Joanna Sintón, that actually, do you mind Lupe holding that up? This is actually an item that we can see that comes from Chayote, is from the Taino community, but as we see processes of colonization, it was then also utilized saffron when the Spanish came in. So you can see at some point, they, to bring that yellow color to give to the masa as well as to the oil, we have, what is very important is to have that oil. So, a veces, lo que estamos viendo aquí, como antes comentamos, es estas diferentes etapas culinarias desde Mesoamérica con la colonización y ahorita los procesos que encontramos con cuestiones de migración, cuando comunidades vienen desde la isla aquí a, al pues a Colorado o a Texas o Miami. So, and then once again, can you tell me a little bit of the ingredients about right in there? Yeah, so this is uh, four pounds of pork shoulder, and I will say, I've never, I'm not really a, I don't love to handle meat, I'm just going to say it, uh, but I did yesterday, because I really wanted to do this, and so you need a really sharp knife, and I needed to cube this in about one inch kind of squared pieces, and there's a lot of fat and all that stuff, and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to cut the fat out, the fat is probably going to make it taste better, so I just cut that thing, it took about an hour to cut four pounds of a big piece of pork shoulder. That's the majority of what's in here. And then there is about two cups of yellow raisins, and really you can use the other ones too. My mm -hmm. preference is the yellow one. Uh, then we also have Spanish olives. Some people cut them up, some people like them whole. I put them in whole. Uh, as well as, um, and then I, I sauteed all of that stuff in uh, sofrito, again with the oregano, the onion powder, garlic powder, beef bouillon. And, uh, and then stirred it all up. And I'm trying to think garbanzos. if there's anything else in there. Oh, yeah, yeah the garbanzos. Oh, yeah, the garbanzos. garbanzos. So I overdid it with the garbanzos. I, I usually <laughs> always overdo it with garbanzos in any dish. And I did that here again. So I doubled this dish. Uh, I doubled the recipe. And so I think I put um, probably two or three extra cans of garbanzos, which is great. That'll, that, so we have stuffing for days. So <laughs> That's yeah, fabulous. there's always a silver lining. May I ask? I'm a little curious. Uh, can you tell me a little oh, bit right. about that ingredient there in the jar? It's a beautiful brilliant orange red. Yeah, so this is a pimento and this goes on delicately after the everything is assembled. Ah. So we would take one or two of these pieces and then roll them up. And so when you take a bite, every bite will have a little bit of this pimento. Oh, and look it's at a that. sweet. Yes. Well, yeah. I don't want to um, get in your way. Let's definitely get into any stories or types of, show us how, what is the assembling process? Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. We are going, Lupe is going to uh, be, and she already did, so she added the, <laughs> the oil, the actual the oil, uh, to the banana leaf, and then that's kind of like our base, and then Vanessa is going to be putting the masa on top of the oil and spreading it out. I will be helping with the stuffing, the pimentos, and folding. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, typically, this is how it works in, in an assembly line style. All the stories I ever heard of people doing this, um, it always just was such a fun activity that people could share. And, um, and then everybody gets to take home some of the spoils and, so, and then share them with their families and then really appreciate all the work and love that, that went into the dish. I'm and so that's what we'll be doing. So I wanted to ask you maybe, Vanessa, can you tell me what are some of your fondest memories of tamales, of when you're talking about them with your family, you were saying a little bit about, you saw them in the freezer, but when you think about tamales, what is some of your most fondest memory from childhood or as an adult? Yeah, um, I would say, I just always remember, you know, it was around dinner time and my mom like saying, quien quiere pasteles, quien quiere pasteles, <laughs> and she would just sort of like yell it out to the house because Again, uh -huh. because they were frozen and, you know, right, she could decide, okay, quieres una, quieres dos, quieres dos, quieres cuatro, right? <laughs> and so she was always like, hey, who wants and how many? Okay, quieres de yuca, quieres de, de plátano, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, that is one of my favorite memories because I can imagine myself doing the same thing. Like, yeah. okay, quien quiere pasteles, <laughs> you know? That's yeah. That's awesome. Pass this and so I see that, Lupe, cool. you have a particular way oh, yeah. of w you're placing the masa on there. Is there a particular reason why you should add the masa in that way? You know, 
Uh, well, this is how I do the masa on my tamales when I do my, my tamales mexicanos at home. Um, I like to kind of evenly spread it out so as to make it, um, you know, a, a, a consistent coat um, for, of the uh, of the masa so that when we're wrapping the ingredients on the uh, inside, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of distribute and fold in and kind of get it all close together. So I can't believe how similar yeah. this is to my, the part yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. granted, different ingredients and all, but same process, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Absolutely. So who we have joining us right now is uh, Miss Joanna Cintron, también que er herencia puertorriqueña. So Joanna, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your process of your family coming from Puerto Rico to Colorado? Yeah, so we, we came by way of the Bronx, of course. Um, and similar stories here in that, you know, it was never, it was never a question of whether we'd have pasteles, but when we moved to Colorado, I was like, oh my God, who's gonna make them? Where are we gonna mm. get the bananas? Where are we gonna get this? Where are we gonna get that? Okay. And, um, I think I messed that up. That's okay. <laughs> See, the, the banana leaves are Excellent. really delicate. They're very delicate. That's too rough. So we okay. might want to do maybe some less masa. Less masa? Less okay. Less masa okay. on okay. them. All right. Less the, other, the other thing that's important with these as opposed to sort of a traditional tamale with a corn husk is that they're boiled instead of steamed. And so when we have something like this, like a rick, oh goodness. the water will get in and ruin them. So mm. unfortunately, we can't use this. We Turn won't it. be able to use this. That's like the first but pancake. Uh, it was just <laughs> okay, exactly. <laughs> that's that's true. True. And then the rest came out perfect. Awesome. Yes. All right. So, so we'll, we'll set this aside as our trophy here. <laughs> all right. So here like where we started, and then look where right? we're this. Just look at this. That means that it also goes again. You don't have yeah. paper? No, I do. I totally do. Do you have the parchment paper? I have parchment. I have wax and parchment paper. I think I've got Let's parchment, do parchment paper. Let's parchment paper. Because then what we'll do where is, it? is we'll worry about sealing it with the parchment paper, and okay. we'll just let the banana leaf do its job you know of giving it flavor. I don't have, um, I don't have parchment, I have this. That's good. This what I have. Um, and Lupe, tell us a little bit about your family history. You said that you come from California and your family like in the middle. from Mexico. Yes, my um, my dad, unfortunately, he passed now, was from um, a small town called Huachinango mm -hmm. outside of Guadalajara. And my mom is from Leon, Guanajuato. And mm -hmm. I always rave like because my mom is one of those um, Mexicanas oh, who okay. just okay. Is, a, is an amazing cook. And um, I so envied uh, all of her... Um, skills because she was always those that type of cook would be always like and so trying to duplicate that myself was always so hard um, because I never kind of really knew exactly <laughs> what um, un, uh, you know un poquito de esto, un poquito de esto really meant um, but, <laughs> so, but eventually I kind of picked up on it and um, I'm really excited to be sharing the tamales with my, my family it's, a, it's like, like you know like the girls were saying it's a a lot of yeah. hard work and then and so you, um, and then you, you know that oftentimes seal. gets consumed in 10 minutes so, <laughs> but I think it's 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 important to keep your traditions and your um, your family history so like, and um, special things like this alive and, and be able to pass it on to generations because if we don't it ends with us and mm -hmm. um, and then where mm -hmm. then where does that leave our culture mm -hmm. so I'm really excited to be learning something new here but still applying some of the same techniques that I do with my family as well Oh, that's great. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. So one of the things that we're seeing now here in the background is how um, a few adjustments that are being made by Denise and um, Joanna. Okay. Acabamos de hablar un poquito con la de cada persona con quien de donde vienen, cual, que ha sido su relación haciendo pasteles. Oh, so one okay. of the things, maybe if we can get a little bit more of a view, maybe if we can open up the curtain between the, sure. and so we can see how Joanna and maybe move the other pot. Um, is see how Joanna's wrapping the pasteles. And so she's used, using parchment paper. Okay. And twine here. That was also a bit of a challenge. Oh my goodness. To so locate, as you're finding. I had to call a butcher and uh, be very sweet and say, hey, can I borrow some of your twine? <laughs> and so basically, my husband went to the butcher and they said, just bring back whatever you didn't use. <laughs> Which is kind of, awesome. a, kind of a Latino yeah. thing to do anyway. <laughs> very, very nice. I think they just gave it Winter. to us. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. So, well, I'm like clearly not. We'll go less. Um, let's see. So when you say maybe less I'll masa, switch, let's... Maybe I'll 
switch because I think and here's what I think Okay. Una de los comentarios Entendeme. que estaba haciendo uh, Joana, que es muy importante la manera que la estamos viendo que se está poniendo la masa, que debería de ponerlo un poquito muy como suave, no, mu no mucho porque lo que pasa es que se quebra un poco de la hoja. Entonces estamos mirando a Joana poner otra vez la masa que de hecho de yuca, el relleno que es hecho con puerco, con garbanzo, con pasas y... Y después ella también está echando un poquito de sellado. Es un tipo de ají, ¿verdad? Un chile, the, the red one. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing this before she folds it. So as we see, it's a, a quite a significant less type of masa. Yeah. And it's lightly folded. One of the things that's really important to look at is the lines of the tamal. We see that the lines are coming down from in a north to south type of direction. So that's also really important is the type of fold and the way the direction of the leaf is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, it's all about making sure that the water doesn't get in while you're boiling them. Then you have a bed. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Y la luz se nos prendió. And then for this here, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. that one already has a hole. That might be okay Maybe. if we can fold around it. Okay. Yeah, this is funny because everyone has, a, even like a matter of like folding, uh -huh. everyone has a different way to fold. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, I just made this up. I just feel like this is, would seal it. Yeah, and so then okay. we'll need some longer string because what we'll do is we'll tie it once around. I'll get you that. Horizontally, and then mm -hmm. once around vertically. So let me get the... So yeah, it's kind of like wrapping a little present, It right? is, exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly <laughs> what these the are. Yeah. These are little yeah. presents for the holidays. Joanna, tell me a little bit more about also your experience here, and we'll continue to have conversation with everyone. But you were saying that your mother and aunt also continue to make pasteles. So is this somewhere that you learned to make them from? Yeah, so um, one year the family kind of got fed up with not having pasteles <laughs> for Christmas. And so we did something similar. We went on this wild goose chase. Yep. Asian markets, Puerto Rican markets, Mexican markets, every market you can imagine we stopped at to get one or two elements here and there. And so the first year, um, it was probably about 10 years ago, it was my mom, her brother, and her sister, um, and a couple family friends as well. And so... Um, you know, the first year was the same thing. It was so trial and error. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure the achote got burned. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, I'm sure we broke the first one. And then each year they kind of got better and better. And then um, my mom wound up moving to Florida. And so uh, they still keep the tradition alive. It's so much easier now that she lives in Florida to find all the ingredients. Oh, right, because Orlando, we're in Florida. This they're just Orlando. outside of Orlando. Oh, there's so many Puerto so Ricans there. I mean, there's so many Puerto Ricans, so many markets. So it's like no longer a wild goose chase to find the ingredients. So when my aunt comes out to visit, they make it a point to make them. So the patelas that they sent me were actually made in July, nice. but have been saved for Christmas. That's because awesome. That's the other thing too. I don't, I don't remember yeah. ever eating them outside of Christmas. Right. Um, I mean, it was just like a Christmas food and I can't even think about eating them another way. Sometimes so there's songs mother, about it mother, too. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's what? There are songs about it oh, too, really? about like dame pastel en lechón. Like, yeah, and the, the holidays. Ajo con gandules, yeah. And coquito. Oh yes. Oh man, that's what we need right now. <laughs> I make some. <gasps> yes. Really? Yes. You make what? What's that? Coquito. Oh, so it's like yeah, a, I have actually have all the ingredients to make coquito. I well, that's make next it. then. Denise. Okay. Oh, <laughs> um, I yeah. was wondering, where do you get coquito? Yeah, from it's drink, a right? Puerto Rican eggnog type mm -hmm. dish. Yeah, right. um, but it is also typically made around the holidays, it's which, so good. as I'm thinking about all the foods that I've been trying to oh, make. Okay. They've, they've all been holiday dishes, so. And it's it's so true because that's when you get like the most nostalgic, I think. Right. Or, yes. You know, it's just like an American tradition with holiday Christmas cookies or whatever. We right. have our Christmas cookies. We have our eggnog, and um, that's the way to feel connected. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, definitely yeah. memories of that where my mom is like, "Go and owl." So I was like, but, but how much salt? And how yeah. much oh, yeah. like, so it's cinnamon? And she's like, alcohol, no alcohol. And then, like, here, just watch me. Just, if yeah. you want to write it down, write it down. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> no, and, that's, that's, and that's, so why, that's why it's always like trial and error. Yeah. And it's like a year, you know, it's a five-year process. Uh -huh. Like, 
you know, you have to like, your first year, you're just scrambling to get the ingredients right. together. And then year two, they're a little better. And then year three, you're an expert, you know? Yeah. And so. Oh, yep, that's how it works. But it's kind of funny, because I know in my household, we, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm married to uh, gringo. an Americano, a gringo, yes. And so Thanksgiving is his holiday. So he busts out all the traditional, you know, turkey, mm. stuffing, and all of that, right? But I'm like, don't mess with my Christmas. Like, oh. I need my Christmas. I want, because that was where my parents, you know, oh. we in our house did something different. We did the tamales. And so um, there were a couple of years where I chose not to do them because they are a lot of work. And, you know, they never seem to come out as good as grandma's, is uh -huh. what I'm told. But uh, this year I was like, you know what? We're going to do them. It doesn't matter how we do it. So, like you were buying the frozen you got, I'm cheating too. I'm buying the frozen masa. It's uh -huh. not but, cheating, but I'm making, I'm making the inside. Yeah, because uh, I'm making the insides myself. Because I'm like, you know what? I just, I just want to have it. It, it, like you were That's saying, right. Joanna, it's nostalgic and yeah. it's something mm -hmm. that ends up. Is this it's something that you remember, girl? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which is great. Yeah, but I'm cut. I'm accustomed to something. Just, a little Denise, bit. do you mind in talking mm -hmm. about the labor well, yeah. um, and the amount of labor that goes into it? How much time did you spend? Do you think collectively in making the filling? Acabo de preguntar a Denise que hay mucho labor en hacer tamales y estamos viendo que ese es un tipo de trabajo comunitario no y qué, cuánto tiempo no. tomaste Janice en para hacer el relleno um, como cinco horas aquí but I was talking to um, other people I definitely made it like there were some people on the team here um, and we were talking about like, a grant that we're writing and at one point I thought I messed up the recipe and I was like oh my god I made a huge mistake uh, other than the oil uh, but then I realized that I didn't. So yeah, it took, it took five hours. And I would say a good hour, honestly, cutting the meat. Yeah, I always that remember my mom's hands uh, freezing because you have to hold the meat so hard and you're uh -huh. constantly just cutting and cutting. So she, her hands are always frozen at the end because it's a huge chunk of meat and yeah. you have to sit there and cut the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and you said it was a six pound pork shoulder, right? Yeah, so four pounds. Four pounds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was pretty big. A little bit long. Okay, so, Luba, did you see like how yeah. how big these are? Okay. It's just finding a happy medium. It's like this. this. It's so making the masa oh, oh, thin. Okay, so longer. Like it has to be longer. nice and a thin layer of masa. Okay. Um, but maybe a little longer. Yeah. Okay. Great. So this is my husband, okay. Kevin, <laughs> and he married into my Puerto Rican family <laughs> ten years ago, <laughs> and he loves all things Puerto Rican. What did you say the other day? Like I feel like. Like inside, I might be Latino because I just love oh, everything. Yeah, I, oh. I made, I've made like my second dish of uh, Puerto Rican rice and beans. Oh, right. <laughs> I was saying, uh, I'm like, I must be part Puerto Rican somewhere down the line. I yeah. love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like my sofrito. I was out of town, and I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. Do the sofrito. These are all the ingredients. Wow. So. Yeah. That's but so, and you have pastel steak. So tell us, like, what do you think of them? Do you remember eating them at my mom's house? Uh, vaguely. I mean, I never remember the. Yeah. I always get all the foods mixed up, actually, so it's like, <laughs> I always just say, it's bacalao. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, but it's good. I, I love all of it, so it tastes really great. And so uh, Kevin is the one that ate all of Vanessa's tembleque. Like, I literally took oh, two. She's the one that dropped oh, okay. it off, yeah. and then I was like, where's the tembleque? And then I, then I ate it all. Yeah. <laughs> I, ate it. Yeah. I think that lasted about two days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So estamos aquí presentando al esposo a uh, Kevin Cox, que es el esposo de Denise y que pues ya así que ya es puertorriqueño de corazón, ya sabe hacer unas a uh, cuantas platillos de arroz y también pues que Vanessa que le habían regalado un tipo de postre no se compartió nada, se comió casi todo solito entre bites. dos días y Denise <laughs> apenas comió dos cucharadas. I was like, I gotta taste this oh. right now. And then I put the thing on and I left it and then it was gone the next day. Oh, yeah. Kevin, 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 Kevin. Drop another one by Pues mientras que estamos aquí trabajando, viendo este como una línea de factoría, vamos a seguir haciendo pasteles mientras y vamos a tomar un pues corto bien breve para seguir esto y regresamos cuando ya tenemos unos pasteles listos. ¿Qué piensan mujeres? We'll take a real quick break so yeah, that way we can continue making idea. them. And that way we, um, when we return, we will have some pasteles to show with our audience. Muchísimas This gracias por seguirnos aquí en el Smithsonian Latino Live Mobile Broadcast. I am Dr. Sochi Chavez, aquí con Denise, Joanna, Vanessa y Lupe. Muchísimas gracias. 
Mantenga sintonización. Ahorita regresamos. Yay! Adios. Sochi, you're so great. This is so fun.